Digital transformation is a complete journey and COVID cast has spent a lot of time talking about different phases of that. Um, some of the things that we intend to cover with these vouchers have to do with uh, the transformation of your products to more manual, uh, from your manual processes to more technology driven. So which would be, I would say the digitizing part of the digital transformation journey. Um, we would be able to support with e-commerce and digital payment solutions, um, as well as really utilizing more cloud-based infrastructure for businesses to be able to, to manage their operations. I'm sure many businesses in Jamaica still uh, have paper lead sheets um, or maybe Excel lead sheets, which could really be better managed and utilized in some type of um, customer relationship management software. We really want to see more of those changes or adoptions of technology taking place. And that's the purpose of us introducing these new vouchers. Uh, just a summary in terms of who is eligible and uh, what we will cover. So the firm must be a Jamaican business registered with the company's office. Uh, consider that micro or small sized enterprise, and that is the annual turnover should be less than 75 million. Uh, at the moment, the grant value is $200,000, and we expect that should cover 70% of the cost. That is. If you're accessing and you're trying to pay for a service, you would find a seven percent. Um, and we, you know, as as a development bank, we're in term into sustainable development. So projects that have adverse em environmental impacts are not projects that we are uh, in support of. So you are not likely to be able to access the vouchers if uh, that, that's the type of activity you do. Um, just to be clear, this won't be cash in hand. Uh, it's a voucher to be used to redeem services and therefore it cannot be used for, uh, you know, the number of things that have been mentioned here. Um, purchasing equipment is not an eligible activity under the vouchers. Um, we're not going to use it to pay taxes, rent, utility, you know, all that is here. Uh, more importantly, uh, what the vouchers can be used for. And our aim is to have different voucher packages. Uh, so the first would be a Go Digital business package, which can allow you to have payroll systems to build in, um, as well as HR applications or customer relationship management software. Uh, we have another voucher, which would be a productivity voucher, Go Digital productivity, which is looking at uh, you know, your video conferencing, getting particular email clients, um, possible project management tools, and to help with document management and file management. And as is mentioned here, we have five different voucher packages that we're planning on rolling out, which can get you different types of services. And at the end of the day, it will be up to you to determine which one of the packages is best needed for your business at that particular stage. In the initial stage, uh, we're committing 30 million Jamaican towards executing this Go Digital program. And as I've mentioned to you know, all the technology providers that we've been working with, the PSOJ, uh, we want to see this work to justify investing another um, 30 million, 50 million, 60 million into the program. And what you mean by work? Not just that you get the get the voucher and get the services, but that the services that you utilize and the tools that you utilize actually have a positive impact on your business. Whether that is, um, you know, improve productivity, maybe that leads to re reduce costs, maybe it allows you to hire more people. Business has grown, and ultimately, growth of your business, and that's the. Let's talk, call it the return that we expect from this grant that we are giving for businesses to access these types of services. Um, you know, for people who are voucher program on a whole, 
We have other services like business plans. You can get access to accounting systems, etc. Um, we typically, typically have a limit on the number of vouchers that you can get. These Go Digital vouchers are considered special vouchers. So if you've got a voucher already and you would have used up all of your vouchers, you still can get a Go Digital voucher. Um, so that's, that's an important note to, to bear in mind. So we will have these five different pack Go Digital packages as part of our Go Digital voucher program. In terms of how to access the vouchers, it's a very seamless process. Um, you go to dbjvoucher.com. Uh, you need to register your business, sign up and register your business there. There's a, a number of questions that you would need to, to answer related to your business. Um, you're then able to apply for a voucher. And as I've mentioned, you can click any one of those, select any one of those Go Digital vouchers. Once you get a voucher, and this is all electronic, email communication is how we're doing it, right? There are no paper-based vouchers that you need to carry to anywhere, right? Um, once you are advised that you are approved for a voucher, there are a list of service providers that are on the site that you're able to visit to maybe negotiate the best price for the type of package or needs that you want. Um, and once you've done that, they will redeem the voucher, which has a, a number um, in, this, in the platform that we utilize. Once these providers have conducted some type of needs assessment, you guys can finalize on what exactly the services that is required that you would utilize. Um, once you pay your 30%, maybe that might be a deposit, but once you receive the service, um, the service providers will then come back to DBJ to be paid up to the 200,000 or the value of the voucher. Um, so, you know, it's a very simple process for application. Um, and I'll encourage everyone once this is open and they need these types of services for them to visit dbjvoucher.com and apply for our Go Digital Voucher. Um, in terms of you as an MSE, micro small um, enterprise, your registration document and two forms of government ID are the main documents that you would need to, well, the only documents apart from the application form that you would need to complete in order to apply for the voucher. Um, for those who are want to be BDOs or the service providers, um, there are a number of documents you would need to submit once we have that call reopened for more service providers. And that's something we'll do on an ongoing basis. So at the moment, um, we have received uh, 20 um, applications from technology service providers to offer these Go Digital services. Currently, eight have been shortlisted. And following shortlisting, there is training that needs to take place, um, you know, further discussion, just to ensure that they're up to speed with the platform and can deliver the services. And we are, you know, we continue to assess the others in the program to see, you know, by the time we launch, we should have at least 10 technology service providers, 10 additional, because we actually have three already in the voucher program, um, 10 additional technology service providers able to deliver the quality services that so for the service provider, you would need to go and the application form and process, as I mentioned, there is, is seamless, similar to the application form. As I mentioned, there's 30 million that we have injected and we are hoping that the program is a success in terms of impact and that entities are then, then and then we are able to make a case for us to invest more money into the voucher program that we this go digital voucher program so we can see months taking place. Um, in terms of when you can access the go digital vouchers, come April 1st, the platform will 
now have these new vouchers, which are Go Digital vouchers in the five packages that I mentioned. And that's when we want to encourage all SMEs that are really trying to you know, navigate, navigate this period of uncertainty, um, really trying to ensure that they stay relevant and they're actually able to operate um, now more than ever, even with the pandemic, uh, to visit dbjvoucher.com and apply for a Go Digital Voucher. And with that, I will end my presentation and open for any questions, if that's how you're doing it, Rochelle. Rochelle? Thank you very much, Chris, for that presentation. It seems my computer is a little tired, so it wouldn't come off mute a moment ago. Understood, Chris, understood. Chris, you provided us some really important information, not just from the MSME side um, in our ability to access the voucher, but also how the providers will access the voucher. And just remind us, what date does it go live? It goes live on April 1st, 2021. So April 1st, 2021. So thank you very much, Christopher Brown, Senior Manager, Strategy, Project Management, and Product Development of the DBJ. So I think um, after that presentation that talked a little bit about money, it would be a useful time for us to do a giveaway of a $150 gift certificate from Soho Boutique. And the question is, what is the amount of the funding source for the DBJ, for the DB? <laughs> DJ voucher, the funding source, not the voucher. How much money for the funding source? I see it coming in. Producers, please tell me who we have as the winner. We now have a panel that will be led by the deputy CEO of the Jamaica Business Development Corporation. And this particular panel is going to be looking at technology and industry. And we're gonna be looking at how various, how MSMEs in various sectors use technology in their business. Harold Davis. Hi, Rochelle, how are welcome, you? Welcome, 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 Harold. So I'm gonna hand over to you to introduce your panel. Thank you very much for joining us this afternoon. Thank you so much. And it's great being here this afternoon. It's such an exciting event. Um, I know some of our MSMEs have been looking forward to this event for a very, very long time. And we're excited to be here to move our business forward. So we have an August panel, albeit in March, but we have a quite accomplished panel to share with you this afternoon, just their journey and some of their thoughts in actually utilizing, in investing and utilizing the technology um, as in, in their business for their development. Firstly, we have Monique Powell, who is the CEO for Quick Plates. And I'm sure that many of you have seen Quick Plates online, on the net, all over the place, if you're not being delivered to by Quick Place. So Monique, it's really good to see you. And in, in a moment, I'm going to ask you to tell us a little bit more about your business and how it is that you utilize um, the technology. Secondly, we have the Managing Director for Goodwill Pharmacy and Good Life Health Services, Shireen Dawkins. Shireen, great to have you with us this, this, this afternoon as well. Um, thirdly, we have Ken Kenshasa Minot. You have to correct me if I'm 
pronouncing pronouncing it incorrectly, which I probably am. <laughs> and she is the CEO for Excel Insurance. And fourthly, we have um, my good friend, uh, Mr. Siretsi Small, who is the managing director for Avant Academy of Music. So we're going to start a conversation with you, Monique. Um, and, and I want you to share with our MSMEs online because some of, the, some, of the, some of the things about this digital transformation, the digital journey, many of our MSMEs um, are fearful for one reason or the other um, of, of technology and, and, and see it as something, or fearful one, and secondly, see it as something that you need about three or four degrees to navigate. Um, share with us, Monique, um, how it is that you utilize your technology technology in your business? I know your I know technology runs your business from start to finish. Um, so share with us, and also if you will, in your opening comments, can you share with us as well your journey into technology utilization for for your business? Sure. So quickly, it was well. Let me for those who don't know what quickly it is. QuickPlate is an online ordering platform that allows people to browse through restaurants near them, browse through the menus as well, place the order online, pay online, and have the meal delivered directly to your doorstep. And there's also a spin-off, QuickCart, which does the same thing, but for restaurants like Fontana or convenience stores like Circle K. So we've always been pretty high-tech due to just the nature of the business. Uh, and taking that approach. Experience for our customers. So just one example of that is being able to accept payments online. These days, a lot of people don't walk around with cash. And the fact that they can use their credit card or their Visa or MasterCard debit and pay online makes the process of utilizing e-commerce in a local space much more easy for them. Then there's on the logistics side as well that we use technology for fleet management. So at any given point in time, we can look at a map and see exactly where every single one of our drivers or riders are at any given point in time. And it allows our dispatchers to make intelligent decisions about who to assign to what order based on where they are at any given point. So that's just a couple of examples as, as, as to how we've heavily utilized technology to enhance our business. Great, great, thanks. And I'm gonna come back to you in terms of um, your journey into the utilization of technology and perhaps that is tied with your journey into business itself. But I'm going to come back to you on, on that one. Um, Shireen uh, Dawkins, Managing Director for Goodwill Pharmacy and Good Life Health Services. Um, just probably just introduce for those who don't know um, the pharmacy and the health services, um, what good, good Life and Goodwill are about. And then tell us about how it is that you utilize it. Um, technology in your business from what end of the business if it's is it, if, if, is it customer service is it is it uh, productivity uh, services is it whatever it's just the floor is yours Shireen. okay harold thank you so much for giving me this opportunity goodwill pharmacy is in papine um, near to utic uh, we have been open 12 years, going 13 years now, and Good Life Health Services um, is supplementary to Goodwill Pharmacy. We opened a year, well, last September, actually, in the mid up, midst of the pandemic, uh, where we, off, we have services with a family physician and gynecologist. There is no gynecology, um, gynecological services in Papine itself. And so we're the first to have introduced that. Um, in the middle of the pandemic? In the midst of it, <laughs> I, I am a little crazy. And what I, when, when I was asked by Justine to do this, I was very hesitant, but then I thought I would be most ungrateful because right now I'm speaking to you from Norway. I am not in Jamaica. 
I am actually running my business while doing my PhD. So I am actually pursuing two things right now. And I think if it weren't for technology, I would not be able to do that. And there are many business owners. Um, I have to give a little props to Action Coach because I did that some years ago. And they said, you don't have to be in your business to work on your business. Absolutely. And I took that challenge and I have been really learning so much because I look at the business from my, with an outside view now. So in terms of how I incorporate technology, when I decided to come in um, to pursue the PhD, I got a server installed at the business. I also upgraded camera systems and I have been using remote technology, um, any desk and other means of logging onto the systems at the pharmacy. When COVID started, I was able to have meetings with my staff. I was still able to update my customers using social media about um, different COVID protocols. And just to show you how wonderful it is to still be out but in, I have customers and doctors who WhatsApp me asking me questions, not realizing I'm not there. So prescriptions are coming in via WhatsApp. So we use technology to receive prescriptions. We have an automated system in terms of processing of prescriptions, which most pharmacies have, adjudication of insurances as well. That is technology in the pharmacy business. Inventory management, the gentleman spoke earlier about point of sale and ensuring that we have a good inventory management system. I was able to log on in December and uh, tell my staff who are who physically there in the business that there are some discrepancies here, let us fix them. And so they, are, they, they never feel like I am totally away. With the security system, which there wasn't much discussion about that today, I can look in and I actually some time ago looked on and saw a customer on the floor, somebody wasn't feeling well and brought it to the attention of the staff. So you get to see wait times, you get to see a lot of things when you're um, from the outside. Um, I have converted most of my suppliers, I pay them online. So I'm paying staff salaries, I am paying suppliers online. So technology has made business so much easier for me and I'm very grateful for that. Great, great. Thank you so much, Shireen, um, for that. Um, no, Miss Maynard, I made a mess of your first name earlier. <laughs> a complete, I'm a complete hot mess of it. So first thing that you're going to do is to just tell us how to pronounce your first name. It's Kinshasa, which is a city um, in West Africa in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. So most people say Sasha, it's the other way around. It's Shasa, but it's Kinshasa, no G. Just one word, Kinshasa. I love it. I love it. I love it. I'm going to like so, it myself. Can you guide us as CEO of Excel Insurance? First of all, tell us what you what 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 the business entails for those persons. Introduce your business to our audience, um, and also just to give us a, an overview how technology has enhanced your business and how you utilize technology in your business. Thank you, Harold. So let me start by saying um, Excel is a, an insurance brokerage and we sell primarily um, multi-currency, um, mostly US dollar insurance in life and health um, to groups in Jamaica. So we don't sell to individuals. And um, my predecessor had um, previously, and, and just to add, we are regulated by the Financial Services Commission in two in Jamaica and by SEMA in the Cayman Islands. So we have um, multi-jurisdictional concerns as well. My predecessor had tried to create um, her own proprietary software or founder three times. And this was very mm -hmm. challenging um, over the 23 years that we've been in business. I think she probably has done well in the millions of dollars trying to create. I think our journey has been partially understanding what it is that we can offer and use technology to support that. Because I think one of the things that we tried to do was to offer all things to all men, and that was not possible and created a lot of programming challenges. As we are today, we are still in the process of automating yet again. And my process this time around has been very interesting because I was contacted by software manufacturers in India. I 
searched for someone else who um, other brokers in my business had recommended in Colombia. I worked with two brokers local, two soft, uh, broker software creators locally, and I was contacted by people in the Dutch Caribbean. So there are a lot of people out there who are trying to develop software for our industry. The insurance industry is generally, as I think many consumers can tell, a little bit behind the, the, the rest of the uh, financial services industry in becoming automated. So we um, had to educate ourselves about what was available now in the marketplace. A lot of techno technological advancements have taken place and many of the things are, the products that are being offered are off the shelf. In order to educate ourselves, I think we spent a lot of time reading, uh, trying to find the right person to help us to decode. And a lot of the presenters that you have put on today are the types of persons who would assist in that kind of journey. Um, there are um, just myriad resources that have come up today that had I had the, those, that kind of guidance right, right. Um, would have made a, 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 a much more you know, rapid advancement. But it was a very instructive process and um, understanding our needs for security. Um, like Shireen, I have a server. You know, my predecessor has a lot of um, good foundational technology in place. But I think understanding the, the technology and also the differences between what could be offered web-based were also very interesting challenges. Our, our affiliated companies, the actual providers, are providing a direct um, opportunity for the clients to come through us and go to them. And that allows us to be, um, you know, um, to be paid that way. And fortunately for us in the pandemic, that means that our clients can go directly to, to source through us. Mm. Um, we are fortunate in that regard that the wider industry has come on board. But I think if I understood security a little better and certainly um, the benefits of what is web-based and where to keep your cloud and whether to so store and back up in-house. I mean, we started where we used to take us, you know, a CD or something and take it home and rotate between which home <laughs> it went to among the employees to ensure that we had continuity of business. I don't think anybody has to do that anymore. But understanding that part of it was a bit of a challenge for us. So I think a lot of um, yeah. companies are going to benefit from a, 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 pro a process like today's offering to be Absolutely. able to know where to look and what to look for. Absolutely. You know, very soon uh, when you mention CD, people will begin to age you and say that, you know, oh, you're from the dark ages. <laughs> you know, we don't, yeah, they, they don't make cards with CD players anymore. Um, I'm just saying, you know, the pace of technology um, improvement is, is, is just out of this world, literally, it's moving. And forward. thanks for aging me there, Harold, I really appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 it's probably here you hear about it or something like that, no, man. <laughs> All right, so we have the one um, among the roses, among, we have the other, well, he's not a thorn, no, not a thorn, he's just another type of plant material, really, <laughs> but he's also, um, a gentleman who is known, I saw somebody put in the chat that you have a master guitarist um, on, on the panel. I know they weren't talking about me. <laughs> but, so um, I want to share with you um, and introduce to you uh, my good friend, um, Siretsi Small, who is the managing director for Avant Academy of Music. He is also a master guitarist. Um, um, but he claims that he isn't a guitarist anymore. He's now a full-time businessman. So let's see. So Siretsi, can you just introduce your, your entity and, and just share with us, share with the, 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 the thousands of MSMEs online how technology has helped you in your business and how you use technology, literally. So talking about aging, um, I keep thinking about my first calculator was a slide rule. <laughs> a long table back in the day. Um, when you can yeah. show you don't know what you're talking about. You know. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and I remember, I remember going to a, a workshop at UE when they were discussing PCs and we were just thinking, what is a CPU? There was no such things as windows or mouses at the time. Um, and I say that to say I've always been aware of technology from when I was young. Um, my dad used mainframe computers to, to do, you know, mathematics, physics, and uh, processing at UE. So I, you know, you'd see these boxes of punch cards at home um, from his work. 
And so when I started business, I knew that computing had to be involved. I remember the first time that I started a business and I bought a computer. It was a 386DX um, Windows machine. I was berated because they said, what are you doing that for? That's a, a overrated typewriter. Um, but when we started Advanced Academy of Music, the implementation of technology had gotten to the point where in 2013, I knew from previous companies that we had to be thinking about the cloud and we had to be thinking about being able to flexibly assign permissions and authority um, at the, the push of a button. Um, because you know we were small and we had big dreams of creating a music school that was going to become something else over time. We were going to do curriculum development and we were going to innovate with programs that would meet Jamaicans at their point of need. So we needed to be flexible and I wanted to create a system that could spin on a dime. Um, we've been around for eight years and we are now um, structured as a social enterprise, which means that we do teach music, but our focus every day is more on workforce development in music and in um, clerical jobs and management and how do we take somebody who was once a security guard and turn them into a manager. Those are the kind of problems, you know, we work on issues of racism and classism in education. And so because we're using, we're doing so many things that in a sense don't exist. Um, what I mean don't exist, there's no, there's no book, there's no manual that I can go to. And, you know, Harold, you know, the conversations we've had, there's just no reference. You can't find a business plan for what we are doing. Thing. So we have to create all the time. Um, so early on, CRM, um, Google Docs, collaborating in spreadsheets, um, being able to do music instruction, uh, music notation in the cloud, being able to record video and to do coding, um, to work with website development and all of that um, is something that we had to do really early. We need to be able to have our operation in like a digital box, you know, mainly apps, so that if we had to move or do something, we wouldn't be hindered by physical space. And so we've been investing, unlike Kinshasa, who um, has had, you know, to be working with coding and, you know, programmers, I've tried, but I'm so small, right? <laughs> And my resources are so limited that that's been very difficult. So we, we have a very hefty like third party bill um, in our company um, right now that I'm longing one day that you know, we can get to the point where we can consolidate that. But we have, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, maybe about 30 apps that we're running in various teams. My admin team is using one set of apps and the, I have a team of music instructors um, of six music instructors that are using everything from um, music creation to um, music production and also LMSs, learning management systems for delivery of, of classes and of, and of courses. And what I've found in terms of enhancement, the difference that it has made, aside from the fact that it has made hiring a challenge, um, we've had to let go, like one time we had to fire let go half of our team because they just could not fit our needs digitally. The use of email, the use of um, software, the attitude towards writing and typing and you know, being online. Um, I myself can't stand the WhatsApp kind of culture where everything is so casual and just so one word, LOL, or my you know, OMG and that kind of thing. I need people to write in complete sentences. So we've had to change our HR approach in terms of hiring for that. I had a guy come in one time to teach music production and I said, type for me, type. <laughs> you know? I need to see that you can type and, and type a full paragraph. So I'm, you know, my, that's how it's affected us. Um, but to sum up, all that we've done and all that we've learned became ridiculously useful when um, COVID came. We were able to transition 
And even though our bottom line got a hit, we were able to move our systems quickly um, to the remote environment and keep things going, keep um, the conversations with our investors and our you know, financing partners alive because they said, well, okay, you still have a chance. So, you know, yeah. that's me in a nutshell. From okay. slide rule to the cloud. I don't know. I, I don't know about the slide rule argument. I just was not around at that time. I don't, I, I, you know, I just don't know. <laughs> just saying. All right. Um, I want to thank you for that, um, for all of our panelists, for that um, introduction and, and that journey. Um, now, a couple of things. I want to address um, entrepreneurs who have a fear um, for, for, for technology. One, or they think it is far too expensive, or they think it is just beyond where they are now, um, or they just think that it's just too complex, that they don't, they don't know how to, you know, kind of in, in a very short um, uh, um, response, each, each, each of you, starting with Monique, just give us an idea, what would you say to entrepreneurs who have that kind of phobia, um, have that kind of suspicion about it. I mean, some persons have security concerns, for instance. Um, how, what, what, would you, what would you say, each of you say to um, entrepreneurs in that mindset? Monique? Well, I, well I, I, would, I would encourage them to look at technology as a friend and not a foe and, and, and gradually ease themselves into it. So it doesn't mean embracing technology in your business doesn't mean that you're going to do a full overhaul tomorrow. It could mean that you, you could look at one aspect of your business that you think is being handled inefficiently and look to see, is there a better way that we could do this? You know, if, if it is that, for example, that you normally accept job applications only by mailing, which creates a lot of paper inside your office. Fixing that problem could be as simple as adding a job application form to your website or you know, using one of the many other tools out there that would allow you to do this, handle this process digitally. So I would say take it step by step, look at small ways that you can integrate more and more technology into your business and if you find that you are just too uncomfortable with the space or you're not quite there to do it on your own, then solicit the help of people who you know are more versed in the technology and gradually you yourself will learn from them and get there as well. Absolutely. Shoot one bite at a time, literally. Um, Shireen? Uh, not much to add because Monique said it well, but I would definitely say do a needs assessment. Um, and budget for it. So if you are a bit apprehensive, you're not ready, it's good to get somebody who knows. And for example, today is a good start for somebody who is not sure. Today, there was just a lot of information shared about why and how. And so even after today, somebody may still be hesitant because they're still not comfortable. I was one of those persons. I was one of the last persons to go onto WhatsApp. Um, but you talk to people who know what they're doing, um, get the younger persons involved um, in the business. I, Mr. Small said it earlier. He started to just look at who is interested in technology and have somebody on your team. So I engaged, actually contracted somebody to be my IT person at the business. And we had a lot of um, arguments because I was so hesitant even to go the way of a server. But over time, I learned the benefits. And so you need somebody to kind of coach you into it if you are willing to invest into that. And you'll see in the end the, the, the benefits. Can you ask same question to you? Um, I think getting the right partners are not as challenging as we thought it used to be. Um, to help us along the, in the process. And I think today, um, put small business owners like myself in, in touch with uh, persons, a uh, big intelligent plug here. Um, I had something that I wanted to get out to my clients um, through a referral. As I said, I do groups primarily. And intelligent was able to help me create um, this incredible construct. And really surprisingly, as Shireen says, 
budget for it. Really surprisingly, the price was so much better than I would have expected. The new JBDC um, grants that are coming up, I think people need to uh, you know, optimize them now. But as, as Shireen implied, we can't afford not to. I would not be able to take advantage of that opportunity because I, I just couldn't think in the way to create the architecture that say an intelligent was able to help me to go, you know, say, okay, we go to our clients, we do this referral, and then they come to this landing page. I wouldn't even have the language for that. You need help. That's what I say. Understood, understood. So let's see. Yeah, I would say to them that it's worth it and it's non-negotiable, that this is, you have to do it. You know, that's where we're going. And so if one is fearful, of technology, if you have the sense of apprehension, then you need to take a good look at yourself as the leader of your organization and say, okay, you have to embrace a growth mindset. It may take some time to discover what is preventing you from making the leap or adopting that growth mindset for yourself. But I would recommend that you attack it as a major project and you make it public. You talk to your team, you talk about what your reservations are, what you're uneasy about, and then make it a team, like cultural um, process so that everybody shares it and everybody learns and it becomes, how can I say this now? The team becomes really passionate about change and moving through discomfort and moving through all the kind of upsets that come when you put technology in, right? Um, and so that you have a sense of vulnerability in the process, right? which I think is very important. Um, there's can be a lots of ups and downs, which is why we have the fear. You know, we have the sense of, oh my God, it's the unknown, um, things might go wrong, things will go wrong. So there is a leadership that is important, model, a learning behavior and be willing to make those mistakes in front of your team and talk about it and then push through. And that's you know kind of how I would say address the fear. Absolutely. Thank you. And in other words, <clears throat> one bite at a time, as 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 Monique says, you know, is it, it, non-negotiable. It's something that we have to get into. So we have to build it into our culture, as you are trying, as you are saying, not seriously, build it into your culture of the organization yeah. and persons understand that this is a journey that we are going to go and we might make mistakes and, and, and whatever it is, we might buck our toe a little bit, but we're going to go on the journey nonetheless, because at the end of the day, there is a rainbow. And, yeah. and certainly, as you're saying, Shireen, that reach out and Kinshasa, reach out for help. Um, sometimes us micro and small businesses are hesitant in some, in some sense to reach out for assistance. Um, hold up your hand. Um, we have a number of service providers that are very, very willing to work with you. There's the JBDC, there's, uh, there are other uh, providers of, of services that are willing to work with you. Hold up your hand and say, listen, this is a journey that I want to go on. Finally, I want to share, I, wanna, I want to ask um, each of you, because there is a moot point about which comes first. Is it the technology that drives the business strategy or is it the business strategy? that drives the technology choice. Um, um, how has it been for, and it, and, it is, and it depends on the business that you're in and the stage that you're at and that type of thing, but how has it been um, for you, Monique? Is it that you recognize some fascinating technology that could you could create business from, or is it that you're seeing where you needed to drive growth or drive business and as such, as such look for the appropriate technology? How has it been for you? Uh, well, I think in my case, one, since I started my career many years ago, I've always been in one role or the other that was directly tied into technology. So I started off in web development, went into digital marketing, etc. So it comes naturally to me to think of technology as the first solution to a number of problems. And with this type of business that I wanted to start, immediately I, I saw the inefficiencies that would pop up with 
asking people to call a number to place an order and how quickly that could turn into a bottleneck and then your business turn into a call center accidentally. Mm. You know, so right off the bat, we saw where the way to streamline this from the get go was to accept orders only through a digital channel that would allow us to, to um, deal with much more, much higher volume, much higher volume within a short space of time. So it, it came naturally to me uh, to think of the ways that technology could be used to make our processes more efficient. As to which one comes first, it's kind of a chicken and egg thing, because sometimes you might think of a cool piece of technology um, and you say, how oh, can I implement something like this in my business? And then sometimes it's the other way around. You have an issue and you said, all right, this, this is a problem that we need to solve to get to the next level. How are we going to solve it? And the solutions that are presented just happen to be technology-based solutions. So it goes both ways. Right. Um, Shereen? OK, um, based on the type of business I am in, which is healthcare, um, it will have to consider the business aspect of it first. It, because we're in the business of taking care of people's um, very sensitive situations. Um, so I have been approached many times with persons with great ideas, but it just could not work because there is the risk of um, data privacy issues. Um, persons want us to go online in terms of pharmacy, um, selling just like that, what if somebody gets the wrong medication? So there are just a lot of implications that we always have to think about. But there is a great place for technology, um, certainly from a managerial point of view. But in terms of applying to pharmacy services, we have a lot more that we can do in Jamaica. I know there has been a lot of discussion around e-prescribing and e-dispensing. A lot of this, more so the discussion has been on e-prescribing, not e-dispensing. And with the e-dispensing, there is just, you saw what happened recently in terms of data storage and breaches. So we always have to be very careful when it comes to healthcare and um, technology, but definitely from a business point of view, it is the, um, it has to be part of your plan, your strategy, because when it comes to inventory management, um, human resource, all of those other things, technology is the way to go. Absolutely. Kinshasha, any thoughts? Uh, technology is driving us right now. Um, I mentioned earlier that we're very heavily regulated. There are so many submissions that we have to make electronically now. And if we continue to try and do things on Excel spreadsheets only and um, on, on paper documents, we have no, we have no way to, to participate in the environment. And from a business model standpoint, I think COVID last year taught us there's going to be no other way. You're going to have to find a way to integrate it into your business and ensure that you have um, something that is sustainable no matter what the circumstances are that we find ourselves in. So I think, um, as Shireen said, it goes both ways. But right now, especially after last year, I find that technology is what is driving us. Right. So that's it. Yeah, um, technology is important and valuable. However, we have to be really careful of being tempted to show off or to grab something because it's shiny. Um, and that's a real temptation. Uh, my recommendation is just in your business, always think about value. I like to think about value and quality. Uh, one of my favorite equations is um, V equal J minus P plus G. Value is enhancing your customer's job reducing their pain and achieving their gain. And so if I make every decision based on um, either convenience or you know how I'm, how I'm improving people's lives, my clients' lives, my employees' lives, then um, I will see if the technology provides that value. Um, sometimes there are easier solutions even than technology. Um, so be mindful, watch the bottom line, watch that cost, um, watch the temptation to get your, your staff caught up in complex systems, one after the other, um, focus on value and focus on removing waste. And then that keeps the balance, I think, um, in the decision-making. 
Absolutely. Um, 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 thank you, all of you, for, for, that, for the response to, to that particular question, because I know it presents um, a challenge sometimes when persons are thinking through, and, and especially when they're at the very beginning of their business itself. Um, digital transformation is about transformation um, using um, digital. It's about your business transformation um, using the digital um, solutions. So the transformation, um, as we are all saying, has to be driving what it is that we're doing. Is it service to your customer? Is it productivity management, quality improvement, you know, and so on and, and so on. Has to be driving our decisions um, for investment in the appropriate technology. But invest in the appropriate te technology, I think, is, the, is, is really what we're saying here. Um, finally, I'm not sure, um, uh, Rochelle, you can guide me as to how much time we have. Um, but I would like to... Carol, just jumping in to say yes. that you have 10 more minutes. Okay, so... great. Great, great, great. So we're not, we're not... Yeah, man, yeah, man. So we can talk some, some more shop. I love it. <laughs> what, what is next um, for each of, of, of your businesses? Um, where, what, what do you see as the next frontier um, for your business growth? And how, will, how are you envisaging technology taking you to that place? Um, for in, in your own business, I, I wanna so I wanna I want to want you to share with the um, the audience really how you're seeing technology driving your business and assisting in the driving of 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 your business in terms of your growth um, trajectory. So what's next for you, Monique, and how is technology going? How you seeing technology being a part of that? Well, for us. Technology is going to be a big part of us building an operation that is scalable, which means that we are currently, and will be continuing to do this over time, looking at all the processes that are currently being done manually and automating everything that can be done in an automated fashion. And what that allows us to do is to, to be more efficient with less manpower. And I think that is going to be our focus moving forward. How can we use the technology to make our platform more scalable, make our operations more scalable so that you know each a, a hundred new customers doesn't have to necessarily mean five new staff members. You know, and I think that's, that's gonna be our focus for the short to medium term. Any particular technology that you have your eye on? Well, I, I can give I can give one example. Uh, currently, there is a, a, a quite a bit of human intervention involved in in all. money gets frozen. Based on you know a wide variety of factors, you know distance traffic, weather conditions, and basically putting in place a system that tries to replicate the decision process of a human being and assign the orders in the same way that a human being would based on a number of factors. So that is one example. So you're looking, you're looking at AI? You could call it that. That's the buzz term now, but yeah, yeah, that's that. exciting. That's exciting. Same question to you, Shireen. Okay. Um, definitely, I know in the pharmacy industry, all of us are waiting on um, e prescribing to get the standards so that we can get online and really get to that point where we receive the prescriptions quickly and able to dispense. And one of the best parts is to do medication therapy management. Um, so all of those things that we do 
in the pharmacy on a day-to-day -day basis, but in an automated way, um, where all our drug interactions, everything would be wrapped up in one software. We're all looking for that because there are many other countries that are already there. Oh, yeah. um, and I enjoyed the experience being here in Norway. A prescription was sent on me to a pharmacy and I just walked in and I got it. And it was really a great experience. So I'm hoping that um, in terms of the pharmaceutical industry, we can offer that soon to um, persons in a secured manner, not in a hurried way, but in a very secured manner. Um, also today, I sent to um, one of my staff members what I saw in terms of what NCB is doing, e-commerce. Definitely that was very enticing for me. So I, um, I think that is one of the short-term goals to really look at how the front part of the pharmacy can get online and start to, um, to, to connect with customers who may not be able to come in and to improve on how we interact with customers. I, um, there are customers reaching out and saying, I have these symptoms, but I don't necessarily want to come into the pharmacy. Maybe I'm coughing and they need more advice. So that kind of okay. inter I would love to improve on. Okay, thank you so much. By the, by the way, what are you doing your PhD in? Can I ask? Um, research ethics, actually. Um, other than pharmacy, I'm an ethicist. So that is my, um, I'm looking at research ethics committee and their role. Great, great, great. Kinshasa. It's interesting, Shireen. Um, a lot of automation, um, partially because we have been forced to um, have many of the people who would have normally been in office working from home. We have to integrate all the ways in which we can become automated and have everything from accounting, marketing. There were many um, presentations earlier about how to be in contact and drive leads, um, the sales process, um, just trying to, as much as possible to have things that are responsive to people who have made an inquiry, somebody said earlier, um, you know, when a customer makes an customer makes an inquiry, have an automated way that you can respond to that, um, even after their questions have been answered by someone on the phone. That there's an email that goes up goes out with a follow up to check in on them and see what you know if they went to your website, whatever it is. Automating a lot of those types of client interactions and keeping us engaged with our clients. I think the other thing that we are experiencing, um, partially because of COVID, but partially because, as I said earlier, insurance was a little late to the game in terms of, um, and, it, and it, it speaks to some of what Shireen says partially because it's a medical in, it's the medical industry and people are concerned about privacy and, and things of that nature. I do think that we are gonna have to do a fair amount of client re-education. I think we're gonna have to teach people how to use the technology and ensure that they become comfortable with it and um, assuage their fears of um, information being divulged and how much um, technology can, how, how we are protecting their information and how much technology can actually pr uh, prevent other people from getting involved in certain steps along the way when you're using paper. So I think mm -hmm. re-education is gonna be an important part, even from sales to customer service. Right, so, so you mean um, engaging your clients themselves and educating the clients themselves um, about how to, how, how to use technology in, a, in an effective way. And so I'll say, go ahead. So that I'll say, again, another intelligent plug here, boy. I really don't work. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm seeing free service for you for the next year. <laughs> I, I wish they are very sharp, very shrewd, sharp business people. Um, very early, um, one of the first projects I did with Intelligent was that um, my clients were not familiar with making claims electronically. And this was, this is not, new to the industry entirely, but it was also something that clients really felt that their agents should do on their behalf. And there's a way in which people had become accustomed to that as a service. And we just don't have that kind of manpower anymore to be able to do that. Um, um, Intelligent helped me to create a video to educate my clients. And whenever there's a query, we can just send them the video. We send them the link. It's on our website that Intelligent created for us. Um, it's a resource. These are resources that allow our clients say, yes, absolutely, continuing that process of actually engaging with them. Um, sometimes having seminars, um, you know, having things rec pre recorded to help them to understand how to move. Absolutely. That's an excellent point. Um, because even as we shift in our business and our business processes, we have to remember that our value proposition is about serving our client. 
And in order to serve our client best, we have to meet them where they are, um, even while we lift, lift them to, to where we need, where, where it works best for us. You know? So in other words, we, the, the value proposition has to be client focused you know, at, at, at the end of the day. You know, sometime last year, and I'm and I'm not seeing my and my other panelists online anymore. I don't know. I don't know where he he disappeared to. Um, so. Yeah, I, I don't know. And and I was just about to comment on his and on, on, on his animalistic shirt. You know, animal kind of sense. Anyway, <laughs> I'm sure he'll be back if if if, if he gets a chance to if, if, before we end. Um, Harold, I'm here. Can you hear me? Oh, Oh, you're here. Oh, there you are. There you are. There you are. So before I go into my my, my point, and and you heard you heard a comment about the animal print shirt. I no, did. Here. That's good. So, I'm not sure why you insist every time to talk about my clothes, but <laughs> me never saw that. <laughs> but go ahead. The same question to you, Suretsi, as we wrap. Well, we're gonna be where we are for a while, which is focusing on um, creating content and um, a massive database for our. Um, workforce education, music education, Caribbean uh, culture. Um, but I think the next evolution would have to be being able to allow our customers and our um, stakeholders to be able to design their own pathway in, you know, and whether it be their learning pathway or their certification pathway. And or a job placement. And I think that's gonna mean some coding um, that buzzword that Monique mentioned, um, you know, AI machine learning. Um, but you know, that's gonna be our way off because we're, we're kind of in the trenches doing the, the, the data work right now. Mm -hmm. But looking forward to that. Okay, great. Um, I wanna thank all of you guys, um, panelists, Monique, Kinshasa, which is a very, I love the name, I'm going to not stop calling not, not call it Teresa even. Yeah, <laughs> Shireen, um, all the way from, from Norway, joining us, um, and, and Suretsi, certainly. And, and I want to just emphasize the points that were made. One is that regardless if there is some amount of apprehension, some amount of fear, some amount of cynicism, it has to be done, and it has to be done now, yeah? Um, it's very important for us to consider our business processes and our business strategy when we're thinking about um, our technology um, 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 incorporation and management as well and, and making sure that those both of them are in alignment um, to, to, to move forward. Um, it's an imperative that we have to do. We have to be ed educating our customers as well or making sure that our customers come along on the journey and our team members within our businesses as well have to come on that journey with us as well. I mean, and we have made, we have to make some, some tough, tough decisions um, sometimes. Certainly, if you are fearful or apprehensive or worrisome, there is help. There is help. And then the several persons who spoke today um, on the conference and, and, and now BBJ giving you some tangible, you heard Chris before talking about some serious money. Um, um, from DBJ to assist in, in you be, becoming digitized in your businesses, go for it, go for it. The time is now, the time is now um, for us to do so. The time is upon us. Let's be able to compete consistently, internationally um, into the future and, and, and come out in front every time using our technologies. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for the time this afternoon. And um, for the rest of you entrepreneurs online, enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Have a great um, rest of um, conference. It's going to be an exciting rest of day today. And of course, tomorrow. You don't want to miss tomorrow at all. So big up, kudos to PSOJ and the entire team for, um, for, for the work in putting, putting this on. JBDC is happy to be associated with, 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 with the effort. Thank you and have a good afternoon. Rochelle, back to you. Thank you very much, Harold. And to our presenters, I know we have a video. Right across from Bank of Jamaica, when my mother started this business, 
she knew she wanted to grow to be a, a massive regional entity but it was technology that took us to where we are today even me resisted along the way because i built my fancy spreadsheets and i said but my fancy spreadsheet is scalable but there's no scale to a fancy spreadsheet where you get the scale is in automated databases and that is what we did at jmb we brought in the technology people they got over my resistance and JMB is what it is today as a result of technology. Starting from a micro business, downtown Ocean Boulevard. So let's replicate that right across the board from micro, small and medium enterprises. So come on board, March 5th and 6th, be there. Hi, I'm Gregor Pierce with National Commercial Bank Payment Services Division and I lead the Merchant Services team. It has been a challenging time for Jamaican businesses, including MSMEs. And at NCB, we're very excited to partner with MSMEs to help them to receive payments in a digital manner so that they never miss a sale, whether it's online or offline. We also provide them with tools to manage their inventory and the logistics to ensure that their products reach to their customers. We also partner with them to even create the invoices. And then it's not just to receive payments, but they also need assistance to make payments. We provide an online platform where they can do their wire transfers or ACH and RTGS, and also a credit card where they can use to make the payments to their suppliers, whether it's their utilities or their taxes, and they get rewards for the payments that they make. We urge MSMEs to embrace technology because it provides an opportunity to scale your business up and you can respond a lot faster to your customer needs. And it also provides with an opportunity to attract more customers to your business. Let's go digital. Let's go digital, digital. It's, it, that song is now in my head and I know it's in your head. Let's go digital. Let, let us hear that software talk. What a day we've had so far, and there is more to come. Thank you so much, Harold, for leading that panel discussion. Um, we heard from Sir X Small, Managing Director of Avant Academy. I saw a comment. Um, there was, a, 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 Sir X mentioned a growth mindset, and it was relayed to um, what was described as the groundbreaking presentation from Nadine Matthews Blair this morning about mindset. So, so many of our presentations today have talked about mindset. Monique Powell, CEO of QuickPlate, always looking to innovate. Shereen Dawkins joining us all the way from Norway, running her business from Norway, a business that she started during COVID, managing director of Goodwill Pharmacy and Good Life Health Services. And then Sasha Minot, CEO of Excel Insurance, willing to outsource where necessary, willing to try the new technologies. So what we had was an opportunity to hear from our enemies who are utilizing the technology, who are on their digital journey. And I'm seeing in the chat so many people, so many people um, commending the particular presentation so well led by Harold Davis. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I'd like to at this point just acknowledge Imega Breeze McNabb, who is the CEO of the private sector organization of Jamaica. She will in fact be joining us tomorrow and you will hear from her tomorrow. And I know all of you are joining tomorrow where we will be hearing from our technology providers. So tomorrow we are actually going to be in various breakout rooms. We are going to hear directly from our providers. We're going to be able to ask them questions. Tomorrow cannot be missed. Um, there are so many people that have been on since morning. The Dr. Smith, it looks like we have to give you an award. At this time on the Friday evening, we have over 400 MSMEs online investing their time and energy to ensure that the business is digitized. Let's go digital. Acknowledging our sponsors, NCB, 
group, the JMMB group, the Jamaica Business, the Jamaica Observer, and the Jamaica Observer is our print media panel, um, print media sponsor, Flow Business, Microsoft. Now, the PSOJ Access to Finance panel was actually created as a stakeholder body to look at mechanisms to improve access to finance for our MSMEs. And much work has been done with that, with this. Cared KYC has been introduced. We've been working with Development Bank of Jamaica. COVID hit and the group sought to, to look to see how could we pivot to Pardon facilitate- me. your Dropbox is full. How could we pivot to see how we could help our MSMEs through the COVID-19 pandemic? We were charged by the president of the PSOJ not to sit back and watch the pandemic, but to ensure that our MSMEs were being educated, were being trained, were being given free resources that they could access and utilize during the pandemic. So we have COVID cast, we have our weekly SME memos. Last year, August, we hosted a virtual conference also crossing the CASIM, the Road to Economic Recovery, and now we are hosting this conference, which is specifically for our MSMEs. The charge from the president of the PSOJ, Keith Duncan, for this conference was to ensure that MSMEs left with a clear understanding of how they would get their business digitized. No big, big words, no acronyms that people could not understand. This conference, his charge was to ensure himself, make sure people understand and people, and we are helping people on their journey. So the PSOJ, through the leadership of Keith Duncan, who has been committed to ensuring that our MSMEs remain viable during COVID, are able to recover post-COVID, and are given the tools through the private sector organization and its partners to ensure that businesses continue. And at this time, it gives me great pleasure to welcome the president of the private sector organization of Jamaica, Mr. Keith Duncan. Rochelle, thank you very much, Rochelle. And um, thank you to everyone for all those atten who attended today. <clears throat> no. I think we have to use the clap hand feature to, to big up Rochelle because anybody who didn't know, know how to use a clap hand feature, we need to really clap Rochelle because she has done a tremendous job all day. I acknowledge her, man. Rochelle, you are such an energy, you know. I mean, and I know you're up till all hours last night getting getting ready and getting this all together. You know, so um, big up Rochelle, big up your chest, man, big up yourself. Thank you, Rochelle. Um, you're you um Rochelle has been at the forefront of um the leadership of um this PSOJ effort, the PSOJ Access to Finance Facilitation Panel, um, which was really focused around SME, the growth and development of uh, micro, small and medium enterprises. And she has been doing a tremendous job of leading this area. I'd like to acknowledge um, you know, um, two brothers who have been instrumental to getting this, um, getting this digit Go Digital Conference going, but not just a conference, not just talking, but with actual solutions that are in place. And those two brothers are Sheldon Poe and Nevada Poe. Nevada Poe is a bundle of energy. He's one of the brightest human beings that I know. And um, is someone that can move from a strategic level to a very granular level. Sheldon is the eternal optimist who is always looking for solutions and always driving solutions. And um, I'd like to, and how it all came together was coming out of the COVID economic recovery task force group. There was a new economy subcommittee which was chaired by Minister Faval Williams at the time. And Minister Faval Williams, um, you know, we wanted to focus, we wanted to focus around the MSMEs. So uh, we invited um, Nevada, Sheldon, uh, um, Jackie Sharp, um, other, other bankers to the table um, to really work through solutions. And um, of course, Sheldon did get busy and Sheldon got busy and came connecting with the whole IT ecosystem to see what was possible. 
And then we were able to now reach out to the Deve Development Bank of Jamaica to see how we could pull it all together because we have to take an ecosystem approach. It has to be all hands on deck. It ha we have to be working for a solution. We have to be working to digitize our economy. Now, um, so I, I'm acknowledging Nevada, acknowledging Sheldon. Sheldon came up with these solutions, put in a whole heap of hard work as he had a subcommittee to get it done, right? Nevada is Nevada it has worked tirelessly along with Rochelle, the team, Brenda, Jelani, um, uh, as we said, uh, uh, um, Justine, you know what I mean, Alexi, that it, the entire group and a small core group to get this going. When, you know, we got some support from the PSOJ, but the core group has been led by the PSOJ AFFB team, acknowledging them. Anyway, so Minister Favor Williams pulled this group together. Sheldon did a lot of the work. Nevada and Sheldon pulled the pieces together along with Chris from BBJ. And therefore we thought we had the basis for um, providing real solutions, practical solutions to MSMEs. Now to, my, to the MSMEs now, um, where we are, and I think this has been articulated today, if you, 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 we need a mindset change. Or there is mindset change that's occurring. But guess what happened? No, if you don't get if you don't disrupt, you're going to be disrupted. You know, so if we're going to form a part of this new economy and this new world and this fourth industrial revolution, you have no choice but to go digital. So this is not this is this is an imperative for all of us to move up the digital maturity curve. Digitization is real and is happening around us. And if we in Jamaica don't move in that direction and move quickly because we're behind, we're behind. If you look at all our peers and, and especially in the more developed countries, we are behind, we have catching up to do. But one thing I know for sure is that we have the material because Jamaicans don't stop here. So we have the material to get it done. So we had Minister Vaz speak to the fact that we are building out the national broadband infrastructure. That is active work that is occurring to get connectivity going. That is the supply side. Then we have Minister Williams, Favile Williams speaking to, we're getting devices into the hands of children, into students, into the hands of teachers, because they will create the demand and they will create the demand for IT services. They will create the demand for, for content, right? So the ICT industry is set to develop. What I've seen today is that we have the talent, we have the competencies, we have the bright young people, we have the bright entrepreneurs to take us there. The MSME segment represents 44% of Jamaica's gross domestic product and over 70 to 80% of our employment. So if we are going to, and this is where growth comes from in a country, you know, the innovation, the creativity is supposed to come from our MSMEs. What I saw today with a, long, with a lot of those young, bright entrepreneurs is that we have the talent, we have the human capital to make it happen. We have the human capital to have, make it happen. And the PSOJ is here to facilitate as best we can in moving the demand and the supply pieces together such that we can create this digitization and this digital transformation that we need as a country so we can leapfrog the rest of our peers leapfrog the Caribbean, become the Silicon Valley of the Caribbean. We can do it. I have no doubt in my mind that we can do it. We just need to work together, all hands on deck, and get it done. The government of Jamaica has committed to the digital ID. Let's give them the support and get it done. They're going through a process now. Maybe they have learned from the last process, but they're now going through a process to give us that digital ID to make us to make to give us the foundation to get this done. So I have no doubt in my mind and in my wrap up, I, all I have to say is that a job well done and I'm happy that we're able to get uh, you know, so many people out today and that it is in our hands to get it done. I'd like to acknowledge because we have some examples like um, the intelligent team led by Craig Powell. That is a company with two years ago, two to three years ago that started with um, one client, one client and I think that um, or maybe yeah maybe about two to three clients but epoch became the client of intelligent and um intelligent was able to really bring their creativity a creative young mind in craig powell to the table to really shift 
the EPOC kind of um, uh, presence in the public domain, you know? And, um, you know, so therefore this shows us what is possible from our young people. You know what I mean? So when I, when I, when I looked today and I saw exactly what was occurring, I know that Jamaica's future is bright and we can get it done and we can leapfrog and we can digitize and we can move our economy out of this low growth syndrome that we have been in for so many years. And we can digitize and we can deliver education in a different way because we have digitized. So therefore, Jamaica is on the cusp and we are here today and today is a bright day for us. So as we go into tomorrow, I'd like to thank everyone again. I'd like to thank Harold Davis, the JBDC team for working with us. I'd like to thank all the sponsors uh, NCB, the JMMB Group, MS, MSME Alliance, SBAJ, Microsoft, and I know I might, might be missing one or two, but um, just everybody's covered. Russell, Russell named them about 10 times already. You know what I mean? But I would also like to thank them for their support. So Jamaica's future is bright. So let us move with it. And thank you very much. Thank you very much, Keith. Jamaica's future is indeed bright. And Keith mentioned, I thanked our sponsors about 10 times already, and I'm going to thank them again. Thank you to our sponsors for putting us in a position to bring this conference to our MSMEs, the NCB group, the JMMB group, clap them, the Jamaica Observer, Flow Business and Microsoft to our partners, Ministry of Science, Energy and Technology, Ministry of Industry, Investment and Commerce, Development Bank of Jamaica, Jamaica Promotions Corporation, Jamaica Computer Society, the Jamaica Business Development Corporation, the Small Business Association of Jamaica, MSME Alliance, the Jamaica Information and Technology so <clears throat> Service Alliance. Wow, what a day. We are almost at five o'clock and we still have over 350 MSMEs online participating. So today I say to you, well done. Job well done to all of our attendees today. You have committed, you have committed to going on your digital journey. Let's go digital. And it does not end today because tomorrow, Tomorrow we gather again, or they say gather at the river. Tomorrow we are going to hear from our technology providers. They are going to do presentations that will show you what is available so that you can know what are the different packages I have available for my business. Tomorrow we'll also have with us and I just want to ensure that um, I, because let me tell you, tomorrow is a, is a cannot miss event, you know. And I know on a Saturday, sometimes we have things to do. And I'm saying um, you can order the food from Quick Plate. You can order some of the groceries online because you must be here. So tomorrow we will be, the, our host will be Anika Jengele member relations manager for the private sector organization of Jamaica. Tomorrow you will be walked through a technology needs assessment. You will hear from our various booth holders, Innovate 10X, WePay, Adtelligent, NCB e-commerce solutions, JMNB SME resource center, MC3, Resolve IT, CR Metri, CR Metri. Incrementic, incrementic, my, apparently I'm not so good with the reading. The digital crescent, our providers will be here. And then we'll have a panel also moderated by Mrs. Diane Edwards, president of JAMPRO on technology skills training. Ladies and gentlemen, I am looking forward to your presence tomorrow morning at what time? 9 a.m. 9 a.m. And for those of you who know you need to be reaching out to some of your colleagues because it's all about collaboration and ensuring the knowledge is shared, please let them know that the conference will be available online. 
send them to smallbusinessportal.com so that they can have access to the conference booklet and the information that is within that booklet. We have gotten to the end of day one of our conference. You've done it. Congratulations to all of you. Let's go digital, digital. They should have voiced that with me. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, and see you tomorrow at 9 a.m. Let's go digital.